just used to sit at home, cut my granny's grass every Monday, and now I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. It really is a fairy tale come true. And yeah. then the biggie, Wicked. I mean, oh, yeah. how? Michael. How? It's all Michael's fault. So, uh, Who is this magical Michael? Michael is a company manager on Wicked, and he's just the most incredible, lovely person. Um, and see, he just kind of saw me and was like, I'm going to give you a job, I'm going to give you a chance because I know you can do it. And then, so some shows, depending on how big they are, they have people who just kind of go in and cover for stage management. And Michael Foam, he's like, we need some covers to drop in every now and again. Do you want to come and do it? So every few weeks, I just pop down and do a short to at Wicked because it just, it's nice to just pop back in and kind of keep in amongst that kind of thing. And, and I think it's good for our students now that I, like we've got relevant experience. This is what we're doing right now. It's... Yeah. And, and it's yeah, it's interesting that you say that because it, it you know, the the USP or one of the many USPs of Arts One is the fact that you are all so well versed in the arts, in that you have you know you've done the West End, yeah. you know what it's like, you prep your students for auditions and all that tough stuff mm -hmm. that you know that only a huge amount of prep from a professional like yourself would help. Yeah, we work students from the age of three now. No, and so they're, they are so cute. Every Friday afternoon, four o'clock, for a class of three year olds, and they have the best time. Oh, they're little tutus. Yeah, they wear whatever oh, they want, and oh. they've got some twins in there who always come dressed the same. It's adorable. Um, but we've got students in our agency from the age of four or five, I think. And it is about, you know, it's having relevant experience and going, you're not going to get a yes every time, but you will get it. And it's about keeping everyone level headed, and because we've everyone's worked or has contact within the industry like when we run workshops and master classes like our sixth form and second year i think it's every monday afternoon they have a master class the people who they have in is like when they walk in the building i'm like oh my gosh you're in this building mm -hmm. and arts one i found over you know working there for the past four years in the west end and stuff arts ones getting a reputation people know where we are and know who it is and now we literally train from three years old right up to 18 for young adult 18 21 and then we also have like our adult classes and we have people who are like 80 old who come to choir once a week. It's, it's so diverse and I think that represents our industry now, you know. Mm. We're lucky that we work in a diverse industry where everyone accepts you for who you are. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't get anywhere, you know. We've worked with so many different types of people. I've worked with so many different types of people over the past five years and nobody cares about anyone, you know. I'm openly gay, I'm married to Pete and coming from where I came from, that was hard. Say, was that really tough in the beginning? Yeah, it was. I didn't realise what was going on in my head and, you know, I moved to uni, at the, so I moved away about the age of, I think it was 20. Um, yeah, because I went two years after school, so I was about 20. And it was my first two weeks at uni, I met a guy and I was like, oh, that's what's been going on this, in my this head. Is it. This that's is why it, I've yeah. never found that connection with a girl and all the rest of it. And then you have to like tell your family, and obviously my family are amazing. And, I was really lucky. And but not everybody's like that. No, they are. And yeah. I've, you know, it's, it's hard. I've got a member of my family who didn't accept it. And that's, that is tough to come to terms with. It's really hard. But thankfully, the rest of my family are super supportive. And my husband's amazing. Um, he's great. I love and your videos and your, yeah. <laughs> your posts about making cake and everything. Yeah, it's so cute. It's just amazing. And yeah, it's this industry that allowed me. I had my best friend Siobhan at uni. I told her, I was like, you know, it's this big sit down thing like, oh, I think I'm gay. And she's like, yeah, it's fine, no one cares. And that's the point about our industry, and we're so lucky. And we see students, we see boys and girls at our, you know, arts one who are bullied at their own school for what they do. Not for who they are necessarily, but what they do, and that makes them part of who they are. And I'm like, no, that's not a thing. We don't have that. And no. we're lucky at arts when we just don't have that. We create a culture where everyone's safe. You're part of our arts one family, everyone is accepted whether you want to come and just enjoy your one class a week, whether you're here for 15 classes a week because this is your life, this is your mm -hmm. career. And I think we're quite lucky in that sense that we have a huge diverse group of students. I think we have over 550 students now on the part-time school alone. And I hope that every one of them feels that we know them and treat them as an individual oh, because wow. we honestly do. And I think that's something we're lucky. And we have the right team of staff. I think on part-time school, we're about 20, 25 staff going from receptionists to administrators, to me, to our teaching staff, who are all a specialist in their field. If we've got a TAP teacher, because they're qualified in TAP, you know, we're really lucky with the staff we have, and they treat our students as individuals, and it's everyone's on their own pathway, everyone's on their own journey. And that's what I've had growing up, you know, 
I went through mental health stuff, I went through anxiety, I went through having two gap years, going to uni, and then going to the West End, I'm done with that for now. I'm going to come out to Arts One and then I know Rebecca and James totally gave me a job. And then I'm here. <laughs> and like, it's my dream job. Like, I get to help people and support people who want to be a version of me or a version of someone else. And I think that's exciting. And that's what is so special about Arts One. And I don't think, uh, you know, you and I can talk about it till the cast come home, but to experience the pastoral care that you get at Arts One that you'll get nowhere else in this industry. And I mean, I know, you know, obviously my son Benji came to Arts One after a really bad experience at a local dance uh, college. Yep. And, but he didn't tell anyone he danced at school. Yeah. Nobody knew he was a dancer because it wasn't cool for boys to dance. And he's yeah. not gay. So imagine if he'd been gay as well, plus being a dancer, you know. Yeah. And I just think it's extraordinary that, you know, in this day and age, we still even having to have this conversation. But, you know, he, Arts One is the safe space. And you can be whoever you want to be, but you're the best version of yourself and that's why and it's that's so it. amazing. You could struggle to I pass. I should work for you guys. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's like every every student who struggles to, you know, a student might struggle to pass a modern or type exam. That's okay, because that if that's the best you can do and that's what you want to do, that's fine. And everyone's accepted for being the best version of themselves.